gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary the Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on the way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I always love this moment because I am the first one to say to everyone, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. And we rejoice as we've been able to keep vigil as we have been broadcasting all of our Masses during Holy Week through the magic of the internet. We greet especially everybody who's watching us uh, in their homes as we know. This is a time when we continue to pray, and I always make it the point in the beginning of the homily to remind you that we're praying with you and for you, and especially uh, we keep in mind and in prayer all those who may be uh, struggling at this time for so many reasons, especially the sick, but also the ones who are worrying and so many things that people worry about today, some that may be struggling because of lack of work and the situation that has been created. And here we are, it's uh, 40 days that we have been preparing for this night. We have been uh, praying, we have been fasting, we have been doing works of mercy. And we began Ash Wednesday thinking that this year we were asking the Lord to give us 2020 vision to help us to see. And that was the theme for our parish. And who was gonna tell us that uh, this Lent was going to turn so different, that we were really going to need a special sight, a special insight, a special understanding of all the events that we have gone through. But the good news today is that the Lord is risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And that's what the church proclaims throughout the centuries, that in the midst of any tribulation, there have been many in the history of the church. The Lord told us, he promised us, I will be with you until the end of the world. So that's what we proclaim tonight.
night as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. And there are always two things that capture my attention. One thing that uh, as a priest I've done every Easter is I take some time during my day, especially today, Saturday, as we have entered into this vigil. It's a day that calls us to deep reflection, to wait, to be able to enter into the expectation of the resurrection. That's what this vigil is all about. But I always take time during the Saturday of Easter as we prepare for the resurrection to read the Gospels about the resurrection. And there are not too many chapters. It's rather, rather easy to read the chapters uh, like tonight because we are in cycle A. We read the Gospel of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 28. It's only one chapter. That's the chapter that talks about the resurrection of Jesus. If you look at Mark's Gospel, it's chapter 16. That's the only chapter that talks about the resurrection. Then with Luke, is chapter 24, so that's the third chapter on the resurrection, but it's only one chapter in Luke as well. John, he, he's the only one that has two chapters on, on the resurrection. He has very intimate stories, uh, chapters 20 and 21. And it, it's a great thing to just take time during Easter just to read those five chapters because they, they really get us into the story. And every time I read them, you always discover something new, but also you always see two very important things. You will realize that Jesus himself is very busy the day of the resurrection. He, he moves all over the place. He goes everywhere. He intersects the disciples. He's with them at the synagogue. He, he goes out to the women who come to the tomb. And, and, and you can see a very dynamic uh, movement from the Lord is actually, it's interesting, kind of like to trace everything he did because there are stories that certainly the Gospels cover in different ways. So for example, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, they're not mentioned only in one Gospel, like Luke, but they're mentioned in the other Gospels as well. There are references to those two that were walking to a distant village and then they encountered Jesus on the road. So you can kind of tie the stories of the resurrection and you can see that the Lord was everywhere. He was moving around. He was trying to reach out to as many people as he could. The second thing that you will notice is that the disciples, they didn't know what to do with this. Actually, if you read carefully the chapters that I have mentioned already, what you notice is that not every detail is consistent. You have a, a lot of narratives. You have a lot of different ways of looking at the resurrection. And uh, what I think of that, and as I pray with those passages, is not so much that they contradict each other. They don't contradict each other. But those passages, in a way, they show the dynamic response of the disciples as well. They didn't know what to do with this marvelous news. They didn't know how to react. They, they saw what they could, and they wrote what they could, and of course, we believe that they were inspired by God. But, but it does show a little bit of the commotion that the resurrection brought into their lives. It's almost like, you know, not two people see the same thing, and they tell the same story. You always are gonna have a way of looking at it. You're gonna have something that is triggered in your mind. So if you see that there's that dynamic reality, not just coming from the activity of the Lord, but also from the disciples, that they don't know what to do with it. They don't know what to write. They, they don't know how many details to remember. And, and it gives us that very dynamic sense of what the resurrection was all about. So my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate uh, Easter as we celebrate this vigil, as we continue praying tonight and already celebrating the resurrection of the Lord, uh, perhaps it's a good night to meditate on that. Uh, the fact that the resurrection calls us to be courageous, to be strong, to realize that uh, there's some great news that we believe in, that it's the central core teaching of Christianity. Like St. Paul tells us, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, in vain is our faith. We, we believe in vain because everything crumbles. 
this is the cornerstone of what we believe, that we're not alone, we're not lonely, we're not uh, abandoned by the Lord, but actually He is very much with us. So tonight, as we celebrate uh, this very different Holy Week, but certainly the joy of the resurrection, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling like you want to climb the walls in your house, do not fear. Listen to Jesus. Do not be afraid. I am here. Don't be like the soldiers around the tomb. Did you notice that in the gospel today? The soldiers, they were so scared, they were like dead. But the angel told the women, he talked to the women, do not be afraid. And they were able to receive the great news of the resurrection. So let us pray for that tonight as we celebrate that the Lord is risen, that He is risen indeed, and He is with us. Hermanos y hermanas, en el Señor, hablaba un poquito en inglés, pero también les quiero hablar en español, porque sé que muchos nos están escuchando en español, y, y esta es la noche de la resurrección, esta noche en que hacemos vela para esperar la mañana en que el Señor resucitó. Nos dice la Sagrada, la Sagrada Escritura que en los primeros momentos de la mañana Jesús resucitó de entre los muertos. Y, y comentaba en inglés que dos cosas que siempre me han llamado la atención, porque una de las cosas que yo hago el día que nos preparamos para la resurrección es leer todos los capítulos de los evangelios que tienen que ver con la resurrección de Jesucristo. Son, son muchos, son cinco capítulos nada más. Mateo, capítulo 28. Marcos, capítulo 16. Lucas, capítulo 24, y San Juan, que es el único que tiene dos capítulos, el 20 y el 21. Pero esos cinco capítulos nos dicen dos cosas muy importantes. Primero, que Jesús estaba súper activo el día de la resurrección. Si leemos esos cinco capítulos, se van a dar cuenta que Jesús estaba camino a Emaús, estaba presentándose ante las mujeres que vinieron a la tumba, estaba con los discípulos en el cenáculo, y ese día... Se aparece a mucha gente, está activo, está moviéndose, camina, se queda en Emaús eh, cuando parte el pan para los discípulos de Emaús. Y, y vemos que hay un dinamismo en la resurrección. Y lo segundo que se puede ver es que cuando leemos los cinco capítulos hay muchas partes que nos parecen quizás contradictorias. ¿Cómo fue en realidad? Pero no es que sean contradictorias, es que los discípulos tampoco sabían qué hacer con la buena noticia que estaban recibiendo. Ellos miraron, vieron, trataron de comprender, recordaron, entraron en el misterio que estaban celebrando y, y escribieron, inspirados por Dios, lo que Dios les inspiró a escribir para comunicarnos a nosotros de la gran noticia de la resurrección de Jesús. Pero esas dos realidades nos llaman a tener una actitud de... de llenura, de, de querer estar activos por el Señor, de querer estar dinámicos en lo que hacemos. Y ese es la gran, eh, el gran mensaje de la resurrección. Así que esta Semana Santa, que concluimos ya con, con esta fiesta de resurrección, pero que ahora empieza el tiempo pascual, eh, ha sido muy diferente y quizás se encuentren en sus casas un poquito ya como que queriendo salir, que porque estamos encerrados aquí todo el tiempo, la gente queriendo venir a la iglesia, querer estar activos en sus trabajos, pero no nos preocupemos, no nos sintamos perdidos, no nos sintamos deprimidos, porque en realidad Cristo ha resucitado y Cristo está con nosotros, y Él nos prometió que iba a estar con nosotros hasta el final del mundo. Así que esa es la buena noticia que celebramos hoy y la compartimos con todos ustedes para que el Señor nos siga bendiciendo en este gran día de la resurrección. Que el Señor resucitado, el Señor que está vivo, que está en nosotros, que está en su iglesia, que está en el mundo, nos siga ayudando, sobre todo en estos momentos difíciles, sabiendo que Él cuida de su pueblo, Él cuida de su rebaño y nos cuida a ti y a mí. Amén.
Let us stand. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And I ask all of you here with me today and those of you watching us through the internet to please respond, I do. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. Do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life, where He lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. By His resurrection, Christ has conquered all that stands between us and God. We therefore approach the Father now with great confidence. 